Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine within your people here.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. Hello, and welcome to Lakeside Lutheran Church. Welcome to this first Wednesday in Lent, not including Ash Wednesday. Tonight's reading is from the book of Exodus. We are looking at the book of Exodus in connection with our wilderness theme. The book of Exodus is about a people who are freed from slavery, but also might be a little bit confused about what God is expecting of them. Our reading tonight comes from the 13th chapter of Exodus, beginning with the 17th verse. When the Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was nearer. For God thought, if the people face war, they may change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people by the roundabout way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of the land of Egypt prepared for battle. And Moses took with him the bones of Joseph, who had required a solemn oath of the Israelites, saying, God will surely take notice of you, and then you must carry my bones with you from here. They set out from Sukkoth and camped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. Then the Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them along the way in a, in a pillar of fire by night to give them light so that they might travel by day and night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by light left its place in, from in front of the people. Word of God, word of life. Greetings and blessings to our brothers and sisters in Kenosha and beyond from the congregation of Lakeside Lutheran Church. The ELCA, ELCA pastors, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, chose the theme as the theme for Lent 2021, the wilderness. Entering the wilderness, wandering in the wilderness, losing in the wilderness, finding in the wilderness, and then emerging from the wilderness. When you stop to think about it, it was a no-brainer. No comments, please. It was a natural, because it can seem like we have been in the wilderness physically, psychologically, spiritually, for almost a year. It has taken a toll on all of us to some degree, a toll on people, on relationships, on institutions, and more. We may never be the same again, and perhaps we shouldn't be. There is a strong thread that says we won't be, and that that is a good thing. But all of that is in the future. The question before us today is how did we enter it, and were we ready for it? We did have some warning, but not much. I remember preaching on Ash Wednesday 2020 when the words COVID-19 and coronavirus and pandemic were just starting to force their way into the popular vernacular. We as a community, the Lakeside community, the Kenosha community, the world community weren't sure what to do with these words. Actually, there was at least officially no Lakeside community at that point. There wouldn't be until March 15, when the new congregation came into, a, came into being through a vote by its members. And then the doors of the building were closed the next day. Talk about an abrupt entry into the wilderness. I called each member of the congregation with the sad news, but a hope that we would be back together again by Palm Sunday, or definitely, surely by Easter, to a person. Each member of the brand new Lakeside said they understood, some more reluctantly than others, and echoed the hope that our exile, aisle, our time in what looked like empty isolation, would not be a lengthy one. But no one could make any promises. 
God is the only one who can make promises, and that's exactly what God does. The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph was making promises to the Israelites through Moses, one of the unlikeliest of the descendants of the patriarchs. That was the whole thread of the burning bush conversation. God had heard the cries of the people, Moses was told. God promised to deliver them. And God not only would bring them up out of bondage from Egypt, but would also provide a home, not only for those who were now slaves, but for generations to come. The Israelites then, once they listened to Moses, if they listened to Moses, because sometimes folks don't always think they need to listen to their leaders, even when those leaders are speaking with the voice of the words of authority from God. These people knew in general terms what to expect from God, but did they really know what was being asked of them in specific terms? And if they had known, would they have agreed to go? Well, did they even know they were going beyond a vague description of the promised land? A roundabout way, a couple of campsites, not much detail beyond that getting ready to go on a long journey through uncharted territory that will bring you to to an entirely new place rather than back to the place where you started from takes a lot of preparation physically, psychologically, spiritually. The Israelites packed everything they had for the journey, including the bones of the patriarch Joseph. They were ready, at least they thought so, to hit the road if, when, Pharaoh finally was convinced that their freedom was in the best interest of the empire. The chosen people were leaving nothing behind, except maybe lives they had built, even if those lives didn't work for them. Still, it was scary because they were jettisoning the known for the unknown. They were saying goodbye to the only home they'd ever known, the only way of life they had ever known. You could say that whatever God had in store for them was better off than being in slavery, but you couldn't prove it, not beyond a reasonable doubt. Doubt can be the biggest obstacle to seeing the possibilities the wilderness and life beyond the wilderness can hold. Doubts that a new life might not be better than the old one can hold us back, just like it could have held the Israelites back. Because when you enter the desert, as did the Israelites, even if you carry reminders of your old life, you have to let go of that old life. That can be almost debilitating. That can and does stir up fears, anxieties, uncertainties, anger, because the comfort, wherever you find comfort and control, however illusionary, that goes with living in the known slips away, just evaporates. We can lash out at any available target for no apparent reason other than it makes us feel better however temporarily, however it affects the rest of the community. And of course, then we try to bring along as much of that community as we possibly can because we don't want to be or feel alone. That sense of isolation is another part of feeling uncomfortable in the wilderness. We want to demonstrate we are still in control. On the other hand, Considering our theological ancestors, we should, we should feel fairly comfortable leaving the known and entering the unknown. We should want to enter the wilderness. We are people of the wilderness. It is part of our story, part of who we are, part of our faith DNA. The Israelites spent 40 years there, wandering around, maybe lost, dazed, confused, maybe out of control at times, but at the same time, almost in spite of themselves, building something brand new, taking steps, at times tiny, faltering, halting, at times large and confident, toward becoming the people God wanted them to be, envisioned they might always become. 
We can be fairly certain God has the same vision for us, a vision that begins with our own trip into the wilderness. And that's the key. God has a vision, has a plan, has put some thought into this. God is in the middle of all of this. When God speaks to Moses out of the burning bush, God doesn't say, I will bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt, and then y'all are on your own. God doesn't open the door and then stand behind it, waiting for everybody else to leave, and then closing it and staying where God is. As they caravaned out of Egypt with all their worldly and other worldly possessions, with doubt and uncertainty piled high alongside exhilaration and excitement that often accompanies a new adventure, the Israelites did not go alone. God had indeed, as promised, opened the door for them. But instead of standing behind the door, God jumped to the head of the line. As it says in our story, the Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them along the way and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light so that they might travel by day and night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. As we enter the wilderness tonight on this five week journey, we can go secure in the knowledge that God is going with us, that we are right where God wants us to be. Amen. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. I saw proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices. Oh, <laughs> 
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and praise to you. May God create your blessings and keep us. May Christ be our